live. Okay, so we got our glue test rig set up here. And if you are, if you didn't see this about two years ago, we did a whole test with this. And on each of these boards, we've got these all glued on here. And so each one of these is numbered, each one of these is a different glue. And we'll be testing each glue in each orientation 10 times. Um, and we'll be testing here today, we're working on end grain. Uh, we did long grain to long grain. We did one with gap filling, so we actually took a chunk out of the back of each of these blocks and glued them on. And then I have another set that are actually outside in the weather right now that are going to be testing for how do they do outside in exterior conditions. So today, uh, we're working on the end grain here. And we're going to go through these one by one and bust them off and see at what pressure do they bust off. So we have a jack here, so I can put up to eight pounds of pressure. Usually it only takes a couple hundred pounds. And I've got the load cell in here so I can get an exact measurement of where they are. And so I'm, I'm testing them in shear because it's really the only way that you can test the glue itself. If you test it in any other method, you're going to test the wood. And I don't want to do that. I want to test the glue. Um, so let me set this to hold. This will let me know what its maximum pressure is. And then we just slowly add the pressure until it snaps. This one was only at 90 pounds. Uh, what was that? That was, is that the A? Yeah, case and glue. 90 pounds, and I'm keeping track of it all and then putting all the information on here. So if anyone has any questions, go ahead and let me know on this. Um, yeah, I'm doing this live a little bit different for those of you in England or in other places around the world where the normal lives don't work. He, uh, But my wife isn't here, so it's not a normal one. It's just uh, me playing around with the shop and testing out all of these. Oh, and it is slow. So each one of these, there are 10 glue tests in four different orientations. So each type of glue, there are 40 blocks applied. And then there are 32 different glues I'm testing. So it's 1,200 of these that I have to bust off. So let's see what this one gets. Hold, set, placed, and timed. Ooh, this one's going good. There we go, 291. That's actually incredibly strong. 291. This is weld bond plastic resin. And so I have another test that I did about a year ago doing this exact same thing with 32 different glues. And so this time we're actually testing a different set of 32 different glues. And this may be a bit boring, but it is still, uh, it's kind of interesting to see, uh, to see what actually comes out. Like last time, the cheap super glue did surprisingly well. So once I'm done with this test of 32 glues, I'm going to take the top four or five different glues and test them over long-term um, applications to see how they do long-term. 128. That's actually rather consistent. Last one was 112 pounds. Have you got Gorilla Glue? I did Gorilla Glue in the last test, and it was okay, um, but not a great wood glue and absolutely horrible at gap filling. Do not use Gorilla Glue for gap filling purposes. It is very bad at that. Um, and this, this one I actually have Gorilla Glue wood glue. Uh, it's in the other set. But yeah, I'm going to be testing the Gorilla Glue wood glue version. I, actually, I also have a few of the European and German glues in this one. So some of those there. Oop, hold. Here we go, top of 109. 109 pounds. And it'll be very interesting to actually go and test the difference between um, the glues that I did last time, the glues I did this time. And the exterior test is actually the really brutal one. Um, some of those that I thought would do well, such as tight bond exterior, um, actually did really poorly. It, it may be okay, but it's not great in the cold and not great in the weather. Hold this in place. So if anyone has any questions, go ahead and throw them in there. I'd love to answer them. 
Good to have you. What do we got? Uh, Pim, Trump, 32, 30, uh, 63 degrees. Oh, shoot. I didn't hold on. I'm going to have to go back and look at the camera on that one. It's one of the things I'm actually I'm shooting footage of all of these just in case I do mess up. I can go back and look at the number on it. And I'm going to have to put look at number. And the time on that is three. Cool. Every now and then, especially when I do the lives, I talk to people and I forget to turn the hold back on. But recording footage makes it very easy to grab that. So this time, let's turn the hold back on. <laughs> I think I did that two years ago when I did the live. Is Japanese sword better? A Japanese sword better than a normal one? Um, well, I'm not a swordsmith, so I don't really think I'm the best person to ask that. Ooh, that one actually broke, broke some wood with it. A little bit of wood break off. 156. And then if wood breaks off, I notate that. Um, because I want to know, what I'm, what I'm trying to do is just testing the glue itself. I don't want to test, uh, I don't want to test the wood because in most cases, most of these glues, the wood will fail long before the glue does. But I want to find out what the glue strength is. So yeah, if you want to ask that question again, is a Japanese sword better than a normal one? I have no idea. <laughs> Oh, 64 pounds. That was weak. What was that? 64 pounds. Let's see. That is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Wait, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7, yep. That was Pommel Fix and Fast. One of the German stuffs. That was really crummy. Let's see why that is. 64. Every now and then you get these weird outliers that are just a, a number you're not expecting. And I'm really looking forward to showing off all of this data. And for those of you who are patrons on Patreon, I'm actually releasing the data um, as it comes out so they can actually go and see the raw data now. Let's see what this one gets me. 171 pounds. That was Holzem Express, 171. Another of the German glues that were sent to me to test. Oh, number, all right, this is the one I have to mess up on because, okay, yep, this is the 8.5, because I mixed up the gluing on. Oops. At least I notate it so that I can keep track of that. Hold. Nice clean break. Oh, there's another one I didn't check. Put a no fake to check the hold on that. Okay. That's what I get for talking to the camera. Hey, James. A pal here has tuned up about 150 two inch plane blades with chip breaker. Uh, for the blade with chip breaker? Um, I really don't know. Uh, there, there are a lot of variables that go into that, and my guess would be anywhere from $10 to $30 would be about normal. Um, if they're all good condition, ready to stick in and sharp, probably the $25 to $30 range is my guess. Here we go. What's this one going to be? 206. Clean break. That was number nine. That was Pottle Water Wash Fest, the waterproof version. 206. They came from a surplus wooden jack planes. Huh, interesting. So 
Some people really like vintage steel. Um, some people, not so much. If you, uh, if you get into, there's a whole group of people out there that really like vintage steel thinking that it's better than the, the new types of steel. Um, and they're willing to pay more for that type of thing. Two ten. And this one was Holdsum Original. I personally am not as big a fan of most uh, um, antique steels as they're just not quite up to the standard a lot of the modern ones. But in all honesty, for most people, they can't tell the difference in actual function. So, it was a little bit different. 244, that was a decent one. What is that? Holds them water, what, lost the water version. <laughs> 244. Most of those are holding right around the same range. Go back down. Number 12. Hold, hold. Yeah, what do you guys want me to do for the live tomorrow night when Sarah's here? Is there something that you'd like to see? I know I'm talking to the people who probably can't actually come to the live. 148. This is B3D3, a type of glue from Germany. 148. Down. Stick that back in. Yeah, I, I mean, I have some construction adhesives that I'm actually going to be testing in the next string when I finish this one. Tighten that back up. One ninety three. This was Miko Special. I'm going through all of the uh, the German made ones right now. Tree identification would be fun, but it's hard to do that one live as I'm in the shop for the lives. I do have a video on tree identification if you want to see that. Um, it's on the main Wood by Wright channel, where I actually take a camera out in the woods and go around and show some trees. I'm thinking about doing that again here soon. 159, clean break. 159. Go on to this one. That was a fun video because I took my son out with me, wandered around in the woods. There you go. Get that up. Let's see what this one is. This is Tight Bond Extend. 186. And then we got the last one on this board, which this is Tight Bond Quick and Thick. But I do want to remake that video. There's a few things I'd like to mention in there that I want to show off next time. So we'll see. 160, tight bond, quick and thick. That's right on the line from what we got last time. Okay, now let's move on to another one. Let's actually do the other string of boards. So I got all of these that are been busted off. Let's go on to do, uh, let's do this one. This is, 
few more of these. So the next one on this is Type on 50, which is apparently fairly common for Luthers. Go back in place, there we go. And loosen you down, tighten up. Where's a good place to get wood? Um, I have quite a few videos on how to find lumber. I have a couple on how to find cheap lumber. Um, I like to get to know local sawyers, so people who cut the wood and dry it. And so for most of the time of that, I go to Craigslist and find local people. 146, type on 50. Um, but I have several videos on how to find lumber. I have a couple of videos on how to mill your own lumber from a log. Um, then I have a couple of videos on finding junk in, uh, um, for sale and things like that, scrap shops. Most of my lumber comes from local sawyers who I've gotten to know. I like being able to call them up and say, hey, I'm looking for some quarter saw and oak. Hundred and ninety, but it looks like we have some wood break breaking. A little bit of wood breaking on that one. That was actually Elmer's Wood Glue Max. Ah, had some good stuff with that so far. One ninety, and that one has wood glue breakage. Let's slide it over. Do it again. Go in. Over, there we go. Um, how do you fix a chip breaker that someone chappened? Charpid. I don't know what charpid means. Um, I have a couple videos on uh, um, fixing chip breakers if you want to see those as well. Um, and uh, a chip breaker is nice because it's softer metal, so you can rebend it to whatever you want, and then you can um, sharpen the edge so that it gives a nice clean edge for the uh, wood chips to curl over. Um, but because it's so soft, it, it works pretty quickly. So you don't have to worry about it. So you can do a lot with the file on that one. Ooh, 64. Wow, that one's pretty much worthless on end grain. What was that? Elmer's Advanced. 64. That was sad. Don't use Elmer's Advanced on end grain. Well, I don't know. That was just one test. And that's one of the reasons why I'm doing 10 tests of each of these glues in each orientation, is so that if there is a bad sample somewhere, I can find it and work on it. I'm going to have to watch this later. Now this, this one won't be as fun as some of the other ones. I'm more or less doing this so I can point people and they ask me, well, how did you actually do the test? I can show them the video of what all is going into this. Let's see, ooh, this one's pretty good. 212 was the top, but I forgot to hit hold. That was actually Gorilla Wood Glue. I'll have to go back and watch the video on that one to make sure. That's the reason of saving the video footage. <laughs> Write down the timestamp from it. Is that the Stanley V a good playing? Is the Stanley V... I don't know what the Stanley V is. Um, feel free to send me an email with a link to it, and I'll take a look. Just got the jack plane for a good deal, but I did not see the chip breaker was sharpened. 75, what was that? That was trash. Gorilla construction adhesive. I had a lot of people telling me I needed to try construction adhesives, so I have a few of those in here. That one did not hold up well. Felt almost rubbery when it broke. 
that's down, that's tightened, hold, hold. Uh, the chip breaker is supposed to be sharpened. Uh, the chip breaker needs to have a nice sharp edge on it, otherwise the chips get caught underneath it. Uh, 109, what was that? Liquid nails, heavy duty, 109. That one didn't do very well in the gap test either. Uh, I have a Stanley 5, a good plane. Yeah, the, if, if the chip breaker isn't sharpened, the chips coming off of the iron will catch on the chip breaker and clog up. So um, a sharpened chip breaker is a good thing. It doesn't have to be razor sharp, but it is good to have it at a good edge so that the chips will slide over it. 205. Liquid Nails Extreme Heavy Duty. Well, the, the Gorilla Glue there was the, the Gorilla Wood Glue, not the regular Gorilla Glue. Um, I tested the Gorilla Glue in the last series, um, the, uh, the Poly version, and that is uh, I, I don't like using that for woodworking. It's not a good woodworking glue. Uh, but the Gorilla Wood Glue so far has been doing really well. Here we go. 93 was the top on that one. Forgot to hit the hole again. I'll check the video. That was Loctite PL200. Was the Mekel, Mekel Special... 14. Uh, let me see. Where was the Mikkel Special was 193. Although the last test I had on the Mikkel Special was 326. So that's um, a very large variance. Yeah, and these tests are all on ingrain, so ingrain is not a great way to do it, but every now and then you have an ingrain situation, and it's good to know what's the best glue for the ingrain. Okay, lock that, hold is on. Here we go. Wow, 230, that's some good stuff. What is that? Loctite PL Premium, which did fairly well in the gap test, too. Uh, 230, 230. Oh wait, no, that was not Loctite. That was, yeah, that was Loctite PL 3750. This is the one I switched. Just have to check that because I flipped those two. Hold, hold. Okay, going down again, set the scale in place, load cell, break off block, and now let's go back to popping, let's see what this one comes out. This one is Loctite Peel Premium. 186, still a good number. Anything over 150, and it's a really good glue, generally. Yeah, there are a lot of glue tests out there, but most of them just do one glue test, where they'll break off one block and say, wow, this one did good, this one did not. Um, but that's a really poor thing. You need a, a larger sample size. And even with just doing, with doing 10 of each, uh, my sample size isn't quite as large as it needs to be, which gives you a good idea. Wow, that was horrible. What was that? 39. That was E6, E6000. 
A lot of people telling me E6000 is amazing glue, but it's, it's not a wood glue. Um, and it hasn't done well on any of them so far. Yeah. Now these ones are a little anticlimactic. When I do the other glue tests, like the long grain to long grain, those are a lot of fun because there's a lot of breaking and splintering and shattering on those. Here we go. What is this one? This one is, let's see, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, this one is DevCon Home Epoxy. The epoxies did rather well in the last one. 156. 56. Cool. Oh. Oops, that was down too far. Any recommend recommendations for a buck saw blade? Wanting to make one soon. Uh, there aren't many places where you can buy a buck saw blade. Um, I know you can get them from uh, Blackburn Toolworks. He sells one. Um, he, call he has a frame saws that you can buy when it's the right size for it. But there aren't many places where you can actually get buck saw blades. 216, what was that? JB Weld, 216. I was actually rather surprised so far at JB Weld. I didn't think it would do well as wood glue. Um, but the tests thus far, JB Weld has been doing surprisingly well. One of those things that I wasn't expecting. Three more on this one. Hold. Yeah, most all of the wood glues I'm testing are going to end up being stronger than the glue itself. And that's one of the reasons why I'm testing them the way they are, is I'm shearing the wood and I'm putting all, I'm shearing the glue, putting all the pressure right on that glue line so that I know that I'm, I'm testing the glue as much as possible rather than testing the wood. Wow, 286. 286, what was that? Uh, weld bond. Well, that was surprising. Let's see. I have two more on this board. This one is fish glue because you can make glue from any body part. Let's see what fish glue does. Lock that down. Not bad. Fish glue actually did surprisingly well on the, uh, the gap filling, too. 220. Two, okay, the last one is 4x4 four four or, or uh, uh, 4 quarters. It is one that uh, Tools for Working Wood sells. I've been wanting to include it in the test. My guess is that it's a pretty decent uh, PM, PLA glue. Hold, hold, lock that down, see what we get in here. So I think we're about to wrap it up. If you have any questions, throw them in there. I'll try and get those before I go. Ooh, nice. 219. 219. Cool. So that's what I've got so far. That was one full string of 32 glues. Um, so you can see 32 glues along that stick. And I've got a lot more to do. So I have 1,200 of these individual tests. I've got some over here. I've got some outside that are in the weathers. I have other ones over here that are gluing up. And then I've got, here, let me show you. These are the ones I've done so far. I've been able to complete those. So we've still got a ways to go. Um, get in this. Ta -da. So I've still got a little ways to go um, to finish this up. I figure it's probably going to be mm, two to three weeks, maybe another month until all of this is done. Um, and I'll actually be putting out all of the data on this. So I'm really looking forward to comparing. It will now be 
Uh, 64 different glues that have been tested one against another. So it really should give a good idea. And then of those, I'm going to pick four or five representative glues, and I'm going to glue up several boards and put them in my garage, and then every six months test a string of those glues so that we can have an idea of how these glues actually handle, hold up over a long term. I have a few other glue tests like that I want to try on um, different orientations and things like that. First, I want to get a baseline of all the glues so I have an idea of which ones I want, actually want to test and which ones I don't want to test, like the, uh, what was that one called? E6000, which a lot of people were saying, ooh, E6000, that's a great glue. Um, it, it's not a wood glue. <laughs> Has been doing pretty poorly. So let me see if there's any questions. Uh, I like that loud pop. It's satisfying. Yes. <laughs> these ones, um, these ones are, are, are a lot, uh, are, are kind of anticlimactic with the, with the ingrain because the, the glue almost always breaks on this with the exception. I think it was one or two on this one where I had a wood break. Um, on the long grain to long grain, it's usually like eh, 60 to 70 percent of the time I can get the glue to just break on the glue line. Uh, but then the other 30 to 40 percent it ends up taking some wood with it. Um, so I always I notate that because it gives me a good idea about the, the strength of the glue. So if it takes wood with it, then I can kind of estimate adding a little bit more um, strength to the, the, the glue measurements. Uh, but we'll see how that comes out. Cool. So I think that will about do it for this. Um, if you have any questions or ideas or something you'd like me to test, uh, let me know. Otherwise, we're going to be seeing this glue test and results, results coming out soon. If you are a member on Patreon I, Patreon, I have a link to the spreadsheet on there so you can see all the raw data that we've gotten thus far in the glue test. So I think that's about it. I'm going to go turn this off. Until next time, have a wonderful day.